Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. A while ago I mentioned that I would do a video comparing the three applications that use AI for sky replacement. Those applications are On One Photo Raw 2022, Luminar Neo, and Photoshop. Now of course, Luminar AI also uses AI for sky replacement, but I'm not going to include it in this comparison because Luminar AI uses the same exact technology that is found in Luminar Neo. Now we're going to be using this sky with all three applications. This is a sky from OccuDrone. I mentioned numerous times that in my opinion, OccuDrone sell the best skies. I'll have links to them in the description below this video. This is one of their skies in their cotton candy collection and it's sky number 03. And we're going to be using the same exact image with all three applications, this image. Uh, this is a good image to use because it has a building in it, it has a lot of trees in it, and it has a reflection. So it's good to see um, how these applications handle all those different variables. Now let's start out, since we're in Luminar Neo, let's start out here. We're going to go right to the Sky AI tool and open that up. We're going to go to the Sky section, and I mentioned it's an OccuDrone Cotton Candy Sky, number 03, which I think is the third one. From the left, we'll click on that and get it replaced. It's going to take a second for it to mask. And there it goes. So it's in there. Now we have a lot of control with Luminar Neo. Um, first of all, um, where it placed it. We could go up to, let's go right up to sky orientation. You have the horizon position. So you could move this up or down. So if I move it up, it takes a second to do that. And you can see it moves the reflection as well. As a matter of fact, if you can't see the reflection, let me jump down here to reflection and increase the reflection amount so you can see it. Now, one problem that you'll find at times with Luminar AI and Luminar Neo is the reflection position. Unfortunately, you cannot move the reflection independently of the sky and sometimes it puts the reflection in the wrong spot. For example, if you look at this image, I purposely chose this specific sky because it's kind of like a triangle and the uh, point of the triangle is behind the building. But if you look at the uh, actual reflection, you can see that it looks to be shifted down much more than what the actual sky is and unfortunately Again, as I mentioned, you cannot move the sky's reflection independently of the sky itself. And if you move the sky with, let's say, horizon position, it will move the reflection as well. And you really see what I mean? So it really can't get a good spot. Now, it doesn't do this all the time, but it will do it sometimes on images where it's very noticeable. Like this one where I have the building is the focal point. Or maybe a, you have an image with a mountain peak and it will do it and it just won't look right. You, other than that, you do have a lot of control. As I was moving this horizon position, you have a vertical position, which does pretty similar movements here. You can see you have this horizontal position, which basically moves it right or left. And also if you need to like match the lighting in the scene, you could flip the sky horizontally with this uh, checkbox. So that's the sky orientation. You have mask refinement. You can see how it's not blending too well around these trees over here on the right. You could help that maybe move global to the right. It takes a second for it to render. You can see how it's kind of going in there much better. Close gaps with that. See how that does. And fix details with that. Again, you could always come in and remove the sky again, move it around a little more the horizon position, move it down. It seems to match a little better like that. So you could get it, you know, with these little tweaks of these sliders, you could definitely sell it except for the reflection. Um, let's see, scene relighting. Um, when you replace a sky with Luminar AI or Luminar Neo, it will automatically relight the scene to try to match the sky's general lighting conditions to the scene. And sometimes you may not like it. So you could come in with relight strength, move this around, see what it does. In this case, it looks relatively subtle. In some cases, this will be pretty dramatic when you relight the scene. Um, also, you have the option to relight a human because it, when it relights the scene, it may um, just make the lighting on a person not look quite right. 
let me just move this back up a little more like that there and you can see how when I did that the reason why I did that I noticed the building look funny and you can see how the the um, as you're moving the sky it actually is trying to throw light on the building in a certain way you can see that it's even maybe even overlapping the the actual clouds on the building a little bit so it's something to be aware of so all these little fine points you really have to be aware of and make sure when you're replacing the sky that you make sure not only do the tree branches look right and it's not haloing behind those tree branch branches that the sky isn't like overlapping on a building or maybe the lighting on the building doesn't look quite right so you want to move that these sliders around to try to make sure that it looks good to you um, this is the reflection and the only control you have here is the have here is the amount of the reflection and water blur and this is just a case maybe your water isn't perfectly still it has a little ripple to it and you may want to blur the reflection independently of the sky so you could do that you just can't move the reflection independently of the sky and then you could defocus the sky itself um, obviously if you're using um, a wide open aperture maybe it's a, a photo of a person and you shot it let's say you know f 2.8 and the original sky is blurry and you want to match that you're able to do that with the defocus slider you could add grain you could add, add atmospheric haze you could add warmth by moving this to the right or make it a bit cooler by moving it to the left and also you could just affect the brightness of the sky if you want it brighter move it to the right if you want it a little darker move it to the left you can see how it really affects the entire image when you do that so you have a lot of control with the luminar products over the sky I just wish in an update they would allow us to move the reflection independently of the sky I know I've been beating that to death but that's really would make it uh, an excellent excellent choice uh, for sky replacement now let's move on to uh, on one photo raw 2022 drew a blank and here we'll just go to the sky tool right here we'll go to this clouds category I mentioned it's a cotton candy uh, sky from OcuDrone and specifically it's Cotton Candy 03 so we'll replace that and you can see it replaced it pretty good it looks alright now by default it won't automatically add the reflection when you use on one you have to go to the bottom of the tool and turn that section on so we'll turn that on and look we have a shift vertical slider so let's turn the amount all the way up so you can see it now with on one I'm able to move the reflection independently of the sky the only thing I noticed is it will go over see how it's going over the trees well in a reflection maybe that's not such a big deal but it's going over the building so that's something they need to refine they need to fix that a little bit but I'm able to move the reflection so that's good now as far as the actual sky itself we have similar controls to those in the luminar applications we could shift the horizon uh, we could change the opacity if you want to try to blend it with the original sky we could fade the edge this again just kind of helps it kind of blend in better you can see if I move it way left it doesn't look right right so you get it to blend in better with the trees and the building you could shift the edge you can see maybe see that little subtle kind of Thing it's doing there scale if you want to make it kind of bigger you can move it to the right uh, then we could affect the warmth move it to the right to make it warmer move the slider to the left to make it cooler the brightness and you can see the brightness and the warmth also affect the reflection uh, haze like that the blur amount so we could blur the sky of course you might want to do this as I mentioned before uh, if the original sky was blurry and you want to match the focal length and aperture that the original image was shot at the blur angle this just helps you get a different kind of blur you can see how it kind of changes the blur maybe you could use that that's kind of unique and lighting we can turn on some lighting here and you could change the lighting like in the foreground mid ground area here change multiply so you have a lot of control here as well some different controls that are found in the luminar applications and again it just takes some tweaking to try to get it to um, to look to look natural to look like it belongs uh, in the actual image 
So those so far are the Luminar products. That's Neo and AI, although I did the demo in Luminar Neo. And on one Photo Raw 2022. What about Photoshop? Well, let's go to Photoshop. And I have, again, that same image opened up into Photoshop. And to replace the sky in Photoshop, you go up to the Edit menu and down to Sky Replacement. And it will automatically put the last sky I used, which you let it takes a second because it, again, has to mask like the other two apps did. And it replaced it with this sky. We don't want that one. We want not Occudrone Crystal Blue. We want Cotton Candy, number three. And if I remember right, these go from the bottom up. So that's number one. That's number two. And that should be number three right there. Yes. All right. So we replaced the sky. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't automatically put the reflection in. As a matter of fact, it doesn't put the reflection in at all. Now, I do have a video that shows a workaround for this. And I'm not going to cover it here. It is a multi-step process. But I can, if I want to, or if I need to, get this sky to reflect in the water. If you haven't seen that video, I'll have a link to it in the description below this video. It's worth watching because Photoshop actually does a really good job of replacing the sky. It just doesn't add a reflection and hopefully they add that someday. So uh, here's some of the controls here though. We could shift the edge. So if you can move it and let it render. See how it's kind of kind of like fading those trees. See how I move it way to the right. It's kind of the trees look bad. If I move it to the left, see how the trees look a lot better. So you could do that. You could fade the edge. Let's see how that does. So you have kind of blending here at the horizon level. You could affect the brightness of the sky, temperature of the sky. One thing I, knew, I noticed too about this tool, to reset a slider, with the other two apps, you could usually just double click on the slider or double click on the name of the slider. There's no like slider reset with this tool in Photoshop. You have to manually put the slider back to zero if you want to reset it. And the temperature, pretty typical, right? To the right, warmer. To the left, cooler. You have scale. And the interesting thing about scale, which I think is unnecessary, it's at 100. But I could scale this backwards, meaning I could make it smaller. But why would you do that? Because you get all this. So that is kind of silly, if you ask me. So you, I mean, if you're going to use scale, you're just going to make it bigger. You're not going to make it smaller because then you'll see the edges of the frame, right? And again, there's no reset. You have to either manually move the slider or come in and just put in a hundred, oops, a hundred percent, right? To do that, you could flip the sky. So that's good. And by the way, you could flip the sky in, in on one photo raw 2022 as well. I just forgot to mention that and forgot to show it. And the lighting mode, this just, you could go to screen, See how it makes kind of it lighter in here. Most often you're going to want to use multiply foreground lighting. Move it to the right. You can see how it kind of darkens the area in the foreground. Move it to the left. So this helps with haloing. Edge lighting will help with haloing, haloing as well. Getting some haloing in here as you can see. Uh, color adjustment. And this is just kind of affecting the image overall with that. And then you have the option uh, to output this to a new layers or a duplicate layer. If it's a duplicate layer, we'll just have one layer with the sky there. If you use new layers, which I'll do, I'll hit OK, you'll see you'll have all the layers there for the sky. And if you want to add this reflection to the water, you're going to want to output it to these new layers. And again, I cover this in a video. And I'll, again, I'll have that video linked in the description below this video. Okay, in my opinion, they all really do a decent job of replacing a sky, but there are some strengths and weaknesses. With the Luminar products, uh, moving reflection, in my opinion, if they could get that so you could move the reflection independently of the sky, I think that would be um, a great addition to that tool there. On One Photo Raw 2022, it doesn't always do a great job of getting behind the trees and behind the building. It sometimes will be on top. And you have to play with it, move it around, and might have to move it into a spot you didn't really want to move it so it doesn't overlap a tree or overlap a building. So hopefully they um, get that taken care of um, with future updates. The nice thing, though, is you could move the reflection independently of the sky. Photoshop, it does a great job of getting the sky behind the trees and behind the building. 
And with my, although I maybe didn't see it here because there is haloing over here, it does probably the best job of the three of avoiding haloing behind like tree branches and stuff. But the major shortcoming is you just can't add the reflection without doing a lot of work. And um, that hopefully they add the ability to uh, have a reflection someday. And when they do that, they allow you to move the reflection dis uh, independently of the sky. I keep saying that. But that, to me, is a no-brainer. You need to be able to do that so you could match the sky reflection to where it should be uh, in the scene. So that's that. That's the comparison of the three products. Again, those are the three, four, if you count Luminar AI, uh, products that I know that use AI. And this, you know, this is a buzz letters nowadays. All these post-processing applications are coming out with versions with so-called AI, you know, artificial intelligence. Um, it's just the able, you're able to just replace the sky with a couple clicks instead of doing some complex masking like we had to do in the past. So if there's any other applications out there that I don't know about, let me know in the comments below. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.